guys, what's up? James here from Reflect the Screen. And today, I review A Quiet Place. What's up guys? As I said, James from Reflect the Screen. And today we're watching A Quiet Place. This is director and actor John Krasinski. You might know him from The Office. This is his first deep dive into the horror genre. The movie surrounds a simple premise, honestly. Creatures are going to attack you if you make a noise. So the goal is to just stay quiet. Now, of course, the opening sequence displays just how careful Lee, played by Krasinski himself, and his family have to be. This world the family lives in is almost completely deserted, and the film does open up with Lee's wife, Evelyn, played by Emily Blunt, searching for medicine at a pharmacy for her ill son, Marcus, played by Noah Jupe. Millicent Simmons, an actress who actually is deaf in real life, plays the daughter, Regan, whose character is also deaf in the film. Like I said, without spoiling much of anything, the opening film does get off to a very quick start, and Krasinski's not afraid to show off the creature early on, which I thought was immediately questionable, but it makes sense, because most horror films play into that cliche trope of let's build up, build up, build up, and wait until the end to reveal the monster, and the movie will hinge on that. Luckily, Krasinski shows just how evil these creatures can be and how disgusting their kills are so we know what to expect for the rest of the film and I'm actually kind of glad that the creatures were shown early because it definitely displayed the wonderful work by the CGI team because these creatures designs are very unique and they're unlike almost anything I've ever seen in a horror film now there's a really nice level of detail in A Quiet Place, especially when they use sign language to communicate with one another. I especially love how the film went silent when it focused on Regan, who doesn't have a working hearing aid. The family also lays out bags of white sand to sort of trace their paths, and if they do have to run or just walk, they can simply do so on the sand without making too much of noise. I was consistently surprised at how the family survived and how Lee really went out of the way to protect him and his family. There's tons of great editing in this movie as well. I feel like the shot selection was really spot on and the cuts from both the person who's in danger to the person who's witnessing the horror, it's really fantastic. And I don't think that Krasinski will get enough credit for this, but I love it. Something as simple as rack focusing in moments can really like bring the viewer closer to the film. There's an immersion factor felt and I think it's really due to Krasinski's eyes behind the camera. I mean, in so many moments, especially in the beginning of the film, there are plenty of shots where you kind of just capture the bleak environment. As the film progresses, you start to see wide array of shots, you know, like a very, very wide shot that kind of gives you everything and it pulls you very close. So you can feel free for a couple seconds, but then almost immediately you're back into that claustrophobic feeling. Now, while this next point is a bit of a negative in some instances, here it works. The film begins on day 87. Now, while this next point is usually a negative in most films, I love the time jumps. You know, we begin on day 89, and generally I think to myself, well, can we at least see what happened? How did the creatures get here? Can you give us some background? But the film doesn't worry about that. Instead, the film focuses more on, you know, how this family's going to survive where they're at right now. Just get placed into it, get thrown into the fire. And then after the first sequence, you get into date 472. There's really no time wasted, and I think the pace was just fine there on after the day 472. Although there are clear moments where I felt, why should I care about any other character besides Regan? I feel like the script doesn't do a very good job at catering to each character equally, and there's more of an emphasis put on Regan than any other character, which unfortunately hinders some of the serious moments in the film where I'm supposed to feel something, but I just never resonated with the character at all. You know, I couldn't help but feel that there was something left to be desired from the script in terms of giving these characters some shine. And unfortunately there, oh boy, there, there were some moments where characters were relegated to the dumb horror trope that makes you say, why are you doing what you are doing? If you hear a noise, guess what? You're going to either be very quiet and not make a noise because, well, they react to noise, or you're not gonna run to the noise. Or how about you just don't act dumb and just be very careful with your footsteps. Now there's also a gross oversight on Krasinski's part and I think it's something that could have been cleaned up in post-production but anyway the film itself gives you subtitles it provides subtitles for those who do not know American Sign Language fluently or at all now that's great but the thing is what about those who are deaf or hard of hearing and cannot understand the spoken dialogue in the second half of the movie why because there were no subtitles used 
And that's such a shame because in my screening, there were men and women who were deaf and they couldn't understand the spoken dialogue. And I'm hoping that gets maybe cleaned up for its wide release, but I doubt it. I think it's just an oversight. Don't think Krasinski meant any harm, but it is something that you can take away from the film and think, huh, you know, what important bits of dialogue did they actually miss? Now, those negatives aside, I love how this movie put Millicent Simmons on a pedestal. I really hope to see more of her work, and A Quiet Place is really a great follow-up for her after Wonderstruck. So yes, A Quiet Place is definitely a fun film. It's something that you need to see in a big screen because like I said, the sound design is fantastic. It was terrifying. So maybe jump and do one of these. I dropped my Biscoff cookie and had to bite my finger. I mean, you'll know when you see it. Believe me. I just wish it were a little bit tighter around the edges and I think that would have helped prop the film up in the second half. If you enjoyed that film, guys, go ahead and give this video a like. Tell me what you loved and what you didn't love about A Quiet Place. So don't be quiet in the comments. And as always, if you want to see more content from me and my channel, go ahead and hit subscribe. Go to reflectthescreen.com to see more news and written articles that might not make its way in front of the camera. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you at the next screening.